Okay, so tell me, have you ever like been scrolling through an online store and then bam, a product description just like stops you in your tracks? It happens to the best of us. What is it about those descriptions, you know, that makes you want to learn more and maybe even click add to cart? Right. Well, that's what we're diving deep into today, the art really and the science of crafting those e-commerce product descriptions that actually sell. Yeah, it really is fascinating um, because it's not just about listing, you know, features and specs. It's about tapping into what makes people tick, right? Yeah. Like, what are their desires, their motivations, even engaging the senses, believe it or not, through a screen. Totally. It's like they figured out how to like get inside our heads and figure out what makes us click. So where do we even begin with all of this? Let's start at the very top with the headlines. We're talking about first impressions here. Just a matter of seconds to grab someone's attention. Yeah, you've got just a few seconds. A strong headline, it needs to convey the product's benefit, that special something, and it has to make the reader, you know, curious enough to click that read more. So instead of a like boring headline like, high performance running shoes, which you see everywhere. Right. You mm -hmm. might see something like, Elevate your run. Secure your high performance shoes before they're gone. Ooh, I like that. So notice how that injects a little bit of emotion, like elevate your run. Everyone wants to improve, right? Totally. Secure your, creates that like sense of urgency. And then of course, before they're gone, scarcity. Oh, I am so susceptible to that, that limited time pressure. We all are. But speaking of pressure, it feels really important to be honest in these descriptions. Like, don't say something is limited if it's not actually going anywhere. Exactly, yeah. Transparency is key. If a product isn't scarce, don't say that it is and back up your claims. So if you are promising 3X brighter skin, for instance, have that footnote with the research to back it up. Okay, that makes total sense. So we've got them hooked with this like killer headline What's next? Is it just time to hit them with all the bullet points and list every single thing the product can do? You know, features are important, but we want to go beyond the bullet points. We want to focus on benefits. Okay. So for example, let's say you are selling a bamboo tumbler. Now, instead of just saying double wall insulation, tell me, how does this keep my coffee piping hot on my morning commute? I love that. So you connect those features to like a real life scenario, something that the listener can instantly be like, Oh, I get it. I need that. Exactly. And think about those ads for luggage. They don't just show you the suitcase, right? Right. They show you a traveler effortlessly, you know, going through a busy airport. It's aspirational in a way. Exactly. It's painting that picture. Or let's say you're selling a travel backpack. Don't just list the compartments, you know, describe a customer on a mountain trail, the sun setting behind them, and they have their Wander Pro travel backpack. Oh, I love that. And suddenly, it's not just a bag, it's an experience. Yes. This reminds me of those perfume ads, you know, where you're not just buying a scent, you're buying a mood. Totally. You're buying, like, a whole feeling, an aspiration. Yeah. And you're not just buying a travel backpack, you're buying adventure. That's a great comparison. It, it is like that with any product, really. Yeah. It's about weaving that narrative, helping your audience connect with it on a deeper level so they can really start to imagine themselves in that story and experiencing those benefits. Oh, I love that. Storytelling, I'm here for it. <laughs> so we've got our headline that hooks them in, then we tell a story that connects those features to benefits. Yeah. What else can we do? How else can we elevate these descriptions and take them to that next level? Well, you know, a good perfume evokes a feeling, right? Totally. Well, a good product description, it, it gauges all the senses, even though, you know, you're experiencing it through a screen. You're saying we can, like, make that product tangible with words? Exactly. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, it's like, you know, painting a picture with words, right? Engaging those senses. Yeah. So imagine you're selling, like, a cashmere scarf instead of just saying it's soft you describe it as like a cloud of warmth against your skin on a chilly evening oh see now i need a cashmere scarf and it's not even cold out mm -hmm. okay but let's say we're selling something a little less i don't know cozy what about something like like a gaming keyboard even better like imagine describing that click of the keys feel the smooth matte keys under your fingers you know the cool metal frame the subtle hum of the mechanical switches oh i like that and suddenly they can practically feel themselves sitting there at that computer like ready to dominate the game you've taken something you know maybe ordinary and made it an experience that's so true i'm starting to really see how much thought goes into crafting these descriptions it's really like an art form when you think about it. And it just makes me think about all the different ways, you know, that you could describe something like 
I don't know, a cup of coffee. You could talk about the aroma. You could talk about the warmth of the mug in your hand. Exactly. You want them to practically taste it right through the description. Yeah. Just through your words. Exactly. Oh, it's making me thirsty. You know what else helps me make decisions when I'm shopping online? I will say, reading the reviews, it's like I always need to know what other people think before I'm ready to commit to something. Oh, yeah, of course. It's social proof. It's so powerful. And I think especially now, right? Like in a world of online shopping, people crave that little bit of extra validation. So those reviews, testimonials, you know, even influencer endorsements, they play a huge role in building trust. That makes sense. So it's not just about like what we say about the product. It's about what everyone else is saying, too. So like what are some ways that we can leverage that effectively? Because, you know, customer reviews, they can be kind of all over the place. Yeah, they can be. How do you like cut through the noise? You're right. Not all reviews are created equal, but highlighting specific testimonials can be super effective. Like instead of just a generic, you know, five stars, great product, find one that says something like, you know, I was hesitant to spend this much on a hair dryer, but it has cut my drying time in half and my hair has never been shinier. Okay. Yeah, because if I see a review like that, I'm way more likely to pay attention yeah. because it's specific and it's relatable, you know. Totally. It's like getting a recommendation from, you know, someone you trust. Exactly. And don't underestimate influencer marketing. Like if you see someone that you admire use um, using and recommending a product, it adds that layer of, you know, authenticity. It does, yeah, for sure. Okay, so we've got incorporating those like really detailed glowing reviews, maybe getting an influencer or two on board. What else should we keep in mind when it comes to this whole like social proof element? I was just thinking, you know, don't forget about all those visual platforms like Instagram, TikTok, where you can actually see the product in action, right? Oh, absolutely. Like a picture's worth a thousand words, right? And a video even more. User-generated content is gold too. You know, encourage customers to share their experiences and, you know, feature those real stories. Yeah, like we're building a whole like ecosystem of trust around this product. Exactly. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here from like crafting that really captivating headline to leveraging social proof, weaving in those sensory details. Like it's almost overwhelming. So where do you even start? What? What's like the most important thing for our listeners to like remember out of all of this? Yeah, the key takeaway here is like, it's not just, you know, you do it once and you're done, you write it and you're good to go. You've got to be willing to like test and, you know, iterate, yeah. see what resonates with your audience. So it's not like you write the perfect product description mm -hmm. and then like kick back and watch the sales roll in. I wish. You know, the truth is it's an ongoing process. You have to pay attention to your data. Like, do certain words lead to more clicks? Are people like dropping off at a certain point in the description? And that's where A-B testing comes in. Okay, A-B testing. Break that down for me. I've heard it, but... Yeah, it's actually much simpler than it sounds. Basically, you're creating like two versions of something. In this case, maybe it's like two different headlines or two different descriptions and then you're showing it to you know different segments of your audience and you track to see which one performs better oh interesting so it's like a real-time experiment to see what's really resonating so you might test a headline like you know the ultimate coffee mug right against like never drink lukewarm coffee again exactly and see which one gets more <laughs> clicks there you go yeah so you're constantly learning and you're refining based on that data. It's all about optimization. You know, like those running shoes, you gotta elevate your game. I like it. So it's like you said, this mix of art and science, we've got the creative storytelling, the sensory language, mm. but then we've also got this like data-driven approach to really like fine tune it. Totally, and don't forget, a little bit of curiosity goes a long way. You know, you don't have to say everything in the product description, leave them wanting to, you know, explore a little further. A little mystery never hurt anyone, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, listeners, there you have it the secret sauce to crafting those e-commerce product descriptions that really sell compelling storytelling, sensory details, social proof, and a dash of that data analysis. Now go forth and transform your product descriptions from bland to bam. Happy selling, everyone.